Hey, this is Alex from Grey Sand. In this project, I show how I built and installed large plywood sliding drawers into the back of my truck. With help from my brother at Undercover Creative, we came up with a sliding drawer design to create extra storage space for my tools and camping gear. This process of building heavy duty drawers has been refined and tested over the past 10 years in the camper van industry. Keep watching as I will build and install these large customized sliding drawers from start to finish, giving you all the tips and tricks needed along the way. The material needed for this project is three sheets of 15mm thick non-structural plywood. Two sheets will be used for the drawer and carcass, and one sheet will be used for the top cover. I'll also need two sets of heavy duty drawer runners, 40mm by 8 gauge screws, 6mm bolts and nylock nuts, wood glue, flexible adhesive and 40mm nails. Once I've finished giving the back of the ute tub a good clean, the first step in creating the sliding drawer system is to get a few measurements. I will need to measure the width, length and height. These measurements are going to determine the size of the drawers once I make the allowances for gaps, frame width and hardware. It's important when measuring to leave at least a 50mm clearance at the front of the drawer to allow space for the drawer slide toggles. I want to maximise the height of the drawer, therefore I'll aim to have the top of the platform finish 50mm below the top of the ute tub. This will allow me to have enough space to attach the canopy after the drawers have been installed. Once I have all my measurements, I'll make a cutting list, then using a track saw to deliver straight cuts, I'll cut all the plywood sections for the carcass and drawers. If you don't have a track saw, you can always just set up a straight edge with clamps and use a circular saw to do all the cutting. If you want to make the process easier, we have created a set of detailed instructions with drawings that you can use as an extra resource to this video. The instructional manual is available in a link in the description below. Once all the drawer and carcass plywood sections are cut, the next step is to glue and nail the sections together. I'm using a flexible adhesive to glue the drawers and carcass together, but wood glue is also fine to use. I use a 40mm brad nail and then 8 gauge 40mm screws to securely fit the plywood together. Remember to pre-drill the plywood before screwing to ensure the plywood doesn't split. I set up a temporary workbench using a couple saw stools and two planks. This allowed me to stand the sections of plywood on the bench to help hold each section into place as I glued, nailed and screwed the carcass and drawers together. Now that the carcass and drawers are almost finished, I just need to measure and cut the end panels of each drawer. I figured I'd wait for the drawers to be screwed together before measuring so I can get an exact size. Once I've cut the end panels to the correct size and square, I just need to glue, nail and screw them into position. Ok, now that's the drawer boxes finished. We can now move on to the next step of connecting the drawer sliders. I've set up this system for the drawer sliders to finish with a 10mm space between the drawer and carcass. This will allow plenty of space for the drawer to slide smoothly. Next, I'll mark the centre line of the drawer slides into position onto the carcass and drawer as I want a 10mm gap under the drawer and the drawer slide's width is 80mm this means the centre line for my drawer sliders will be marked 40mm from the bottom of the drawer and 50mm from the bottom of the carcass. This centre line will be used to screw and fix the drawer sliders into a straight position. Each side of the drawer will have a drawer slider attached. So make sure this centre line is marked accurately. Line up the front side of the drawer slide with the front side of the carcass. Then fix the slider into position using the holes provided in the slider and along our 50mm centre line marked onto the carcass. I'm using 15mm screws to ensure that the screws don't penetrate through the other side of the plywood. I'll go through after with 6mm stainless steel bolts to securely fasten the slider to the frame. Once the drawer sliders are attached to the carcass, I can now fix the drawer into position. The easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to set up a workbench or just a couple saw stools, then set the carcass frame onto the bench with the sliders attached to them side by side. Measure the size of the opening to make sure the drawer will fit in between the frame, and then add 10mm packers on top of the carcass to represent the space under the drawer. These 10mm packers will also help hold the drawer in the right place while I fix it into the drawer sliders. The benefit of this design is that the carcass is created in two pieces. This will allow for the frame and the drawers to lock into a square position easily. 
This is critical for allowing the draw sliders to operate smoothly. The next step is to mark a 2.5mm quirk around the front of the drawer. This will allow the drawer to finish flush when the drawer is shut against the frame. I then slowly pull out the drawer from the frame and install the screws along the 50mm straight line I've marked along the drawer. I've already clamped the back of the carcass to stop it from lifting as I pull out the drawer slider. Once I've fixed both sliders into both sides of the drawer, I'm all done with this unit and I can move on to the second drawer and repeat the process. Now, as you can see here, the drawer is opening and closing freely. I just needed to move the clamp out of the way for the drawer to close fully. Once I'm happy with everything, I can slide the drawer onto the back of my truck to free up my saw stools and get ready to build the second drawer unit. One of the benefits of learning to build sliding drawer units with this design is that once you can create one sliding drawer system, you can repeat the process to build multiple sliding drawers exactly the same way. I've left in this footage of me building the second unit just in case I've missed anything the first time around. This drawer system is a part of one of my brother Tyson's designs that he's tested and used in his camper van fit outs. He was patient enough with me to answer all my questions regarding the best system to build and install plywood drawers onto the back of my truck. As the bottom of the ute tray has an uneven rippled profile, I've ripped down and planed some plywood strips to pack the carcass frame straight. There are quite a lot of details to this project. Our digital plans have been tried and tested to simplify the process. Don't forget to check them out in the description. Once the bottom of the tray is packed flat, I'm ready to install the unit. I can slide it into position and then screw it down using hex head metal self-tapping screws. I'll then use two 10mm diameter high tensile steel bolts to hold securely. One thing you need to make sure before screwing down is to check there is no pipes or wires under the tray where you're going to be drilling and screwing. I've attached two lengths of 12mm by 40mm pine onto the side of the frame to pack out a space to ensure that there is clearance for the 6mm bolts that are securing the drawer sliders. I can now screw the two units together at the top of the middle section of the frame. Now I'll just go through and screw a couple of extra pieces of plywood to the sides of the frame for the plywood platform to be installed on top of. Now the last piece of plywood is cut to sit on top of the drawers. This is going to allow a lot of extra waterproof storage once the canopy is finished being installed. I'll just cut the ply to the correct size, place it into position and then screw it into the plywood frame. Okay, so that's about it. As you can see, the drawers open and slide smoothly and these drawer slides are super strong and they can hold up to 180 kilos each. The only remaining job is to give the plywood a quick final sand and load up some tools into the drawers and get ready to get back to work. I now have two new drawers at 1200 millimeters long, 370 millimeters high and 420 in width. Now that the project's finished, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. In total, the materials cost me about $700. Now I've got heaps of extra storage space and I think it's a much better way to utilize the space on the back of my truck. Feel free to send me any questions regarding the project in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of our other fun DIY projects. Thanks for watching.